Oh, hello, people. I'm so glad you're here. Type in where you are in the chat. And we're about to pop up our wonderful guest hosts, co-teachers Zoe and Riley. We've got so much goodness to show you today. And we have a giveaway of the course, a little guessing game. We've got some lots to show you. We have a beautiful PowerPoint and all kinds of good stuff. Oh, it's so nice to see so many of you. So many familiar names and faces. Oh, we have a lot of people already. Wow, look at that. This is fun. Hello from South East Michigan and Tucson and Ottawa. Yes, and make sure you're, yay, <laughs> it worked. Hi, Zoe. <laughs> Oh, Hi. It's good to see you. Hi, I'm Riley. Hi, Riley. Unmute yourself. <laughs> oh my God. This is okay. These Sorry, are I couldn't see. <laughs> oh, that sets the tone for today. Now you know what this is going to be like. Yeah. But you will learn a lot too. And we'll talk all about our new course. It's not new, it's our third, I think, third year. Of character boot camp? Second, yeah, I think maybe the third. I oh, I don't know. Well, some, somebody oh, else will remember, yeah, I'm sure. Hello from Brooklyn. Hello from UK. It's such a popular class. Boot camp is fabulous because you get something every Monday. How great is that? And it's going to help you get picture books. And these are all ones that my agency has. Oh, look at that. These were <laughs> all ones that we uh agented and here's some toys toys and games so this course is gonna help you make portfolio pieces so you can get those gigs well, look at this i pulled this up this was by Susie altman for atlanta not a long time ago not cool wooden gorgeous it is let me move this the tag is in the way well and then this helen dardic we did a whole series of these is this incredible oh i love that you know, they're that. Hello from Montreal. So, Zoe and Riley, are you excited to start class? Yes, very excited. Yes. It's so great nice to see you both. You, you too, both too. We need this. I I need a little boot camp, summer boot camp. You, you do too, Zoe. I know it. I know you always say it's like your buffet. It's like a little snack buffet of great illustration and great toy ideas. And it just kind of gives us that little boost over the summer that we need. It does. And it gives you structure. It gives you art making that has a purpose. You've got these wonderful texts from Zoe to start with with characters there are many texts and and this is not as intense as the five week illustrated mm. book it's something you can do over the summer in bite sized bits you it's know it's a snack nilla lilla it's a snack snacks. it's snacks <laughs> tea and and pudding or whatever you taught me tea and, <laughs> and tea and cake after you get zoe's little mini text and draw your little character, which can be, we'll, we'll look at fabulous examples. Then Zoe gives you how to convert it into a toy or game. So you've already done the work. You already have your character. Now you're just going to make it a toy or a game. So oh my goodness, Lilla, I just have to tell you that I there is a student, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Wakefield. Great to see you. Debbie, turn your comments from host and panelist to everyone so everyone can meet you. Debbie and I went to school together. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm excited that you're here. So that's together really lovely. With Mrs. Skinner. Phillips. Oh, Mrs. Skinner. She was like an awesome art teacher, Lilla. You would have loved her. She was an expressionistic painter and she just had such a great style and uh, took no nonsense from us, that's for sure. <laughs> Philip says it's like the Whole Foods buffet area with endless containers to fill. Oh, it's Greg. Yeah, I was going to say, this sounds like Greg. Oh, okay, so Philip D'Angelo is Greg. Okay, that's good to know. First you know, all, I want to say I, thank you. sorry to interrupt. I was also going to tell you that Diana loves this class, Diana Soros. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh my god That's goodwill three dollars <laughs> is everyone watching make sure you get on tiktok and watch smiley riley because he goes to thrift shops 
and finds finds. It's so cool. Do I have it right, Smiley Riley? Or yeah. Riley? Smiley Riley on TikTok, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. I know you're angry. Okay. I would be too if I were $3. It, it makes sounds? Yeah. Yep. That's the best uh, deal ever. $3. <laughs> and she had batteries in her. I, I'm i obsessed with, with Goodwill. Yeah. Yes. Well, I love when you go there. It's really a riot. It's great. Um, why have you called him Rye Bread? Oh, yeah, I do call him rye bread because he rye, because rye and then rye bread and, you know. So. And I'm dry. I'm crunchy if I'm, <laughs> if I don't butter on me. Oh, I'm jealous of whatever you're drinking. Okay, so, and uh, for those of you that just joined, we are having a giveaway of the course at the end. We're here to tell you all about the fabulous course and any questions you have put in the Q&A, just find the oh, button yeah. down below. And yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's so nice, Lilla. We've got some people from our Illustrating Children's Book course who are joining us for this. Nice. It's really good to see you guys in class. That's great. So wonderful. That's a great yeah. one. But that won't be on until a year from now or something. Okay, so here's what I want to say um, to Zoe and Riley, if I may have a moment to just talk to them privately, if you don't mind. Um, the PowerPoint is really freaking long. There's a billion images. So um, when we look at previous, I think it's previous last year's class work, there's a whole bunch. So we won't comment on every one. Okay, I got it, I got okay. it. Okay. It's okay. her fault, her, it, it's her fault. It's, it's Zoe's fault. Where oh, I do, I'm sorry I talk too much. I'll just drink my tea, we're okay. That's a nice mug and the nails. So why don't we go right to the PowerPoint. I'm so happy to be with everyone. So much great information. Thank you, Trina or Trina. Class starts today. Oh, um, first of all, I want to say hello to our background people. Kim, would you pop up the poll? Lovely Kim. And hello, Becky and Louise, I think, are here in the background and they <clears throat> put links and so forth or help answer questions and everything. Oh, good. Louise. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, guys. Yes. Yes, you can still sign up for class today. So here's the poll. You should be able to see the poll. And if you can't, just press the escape button and it should be behind here. Um, so we just want to know. Oh, Zoe, I mean, um, um, Kim, can you see the answers? Because I can't see the, <laughs> the percentages. <laughs> they, they they change Zoom on us. And, you know, don't change tech, people. Just don't do that to us. Okay. Anyway, have you ever taken a maths course? Oh, here. Thank you, Kim. She fixed it. Have you ever taken a maths course before? 77% and counting. Have you already signed up for the class? 60% and counting. What's your background? Interested in, let's see what the most one is. I'm working a working illustrator or artist, but want to level up your career, want to make more money, get more gigs, that kind of thing. Um, that's 46%. And it's still tabulating, so you can keep uh, you can answer keep answering the poll. Interested in switching from my non-art job to an art career, 31%. That's wonderful. Love to take the courses for personal uh enrichment. Yeah, you know, where's the polls? Kit, if you click um escape it should be popping up for you okay so now you see our powerpoint here's what we have today class starts today you know it's at makeartthatsells.com here's the link up top here i don't know if the link works for you but anyway just go to makeartthatsells.com and click and um it should, it should be on the home page we're going to see examples of toys and games and examples of books What's in the course, your class schedule. Zoe shows favorite books and what she looks for. Riley shows favorite toys and why they sell. We um we have some in the PowerPoint, but if you want to hold them up too, that's fine. Um, student work from last year's class, a few mats preps, Q&A and a giveaway, yay. Okay, so like what the heck are picture books anyway? They can be so many different things. I just pulled up this fact 
um, there were around 7,424 children's books published in the US, individual books. That means each one needed to be commissioned uh, typically with, for, with an artist. So there's a lot of work out there. It's a healthy area with a lot of work. Uh, people always buy stuff for their kids, no matter what is going on. And you can see the range of books. This is older, this is younger. This is actually not a book, it's stickers. Uh, this is a science-y book about marine life. This is more of a younger book. So there we go. Okay, toys agented by us. And you can see there's so much use for art on, on so many product, product, products, particularly puzzles. Can you say that? Products, particularly puzzles. <laughs> Lots of puzzle work. Here's a big block puzzle on top and craft and so forth. What's a character? Riley taught us many years ago. We're like, Riley, what is a character? You've been in the toy business forever. What's a character? He said, basically anything with a face. Oh, okay. That's nice. So, uh, Zoe, would you read this? Yep, Please. sure. So that. this is how the class works, everyone. You get something every Monday for the next three months. You'll get downloadable assignments, one from me, one from Riley. We give you some video content and you also get live Zooms at the end of each month. So the first Monday of the month, a children's book mini story to illustrate from art director and author Zoe Tucker. That's me. That's Second nice. Monday of every month, a toy assignment from toy inventor Riley Wilkinson. Third Monday of every month, a bonus surprise from your teachers. And I can tell you that today I've been working on my bonus and it's kind of silly and goofy and funny and uh, all over the place, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, and we go on a research trip together. So we go down the high street and we check out lots of different shops and I tell you what kind of jumps out to me and what doesn't. And I get asked to stop filming in the posh French beige baby shop so <laughs> yeah okay so um, Zoe, Zoe's actually calling from the police station <laughs> yeah so uh yeah I'm I'm always so shy when I'm doing anything like that in public so I just had to crack on with it today Monday morning hoping that not many people were looking at me um anyway number four you get live zooms with Lilla Zoe and Riley and you can ask us anything we can give you some insights into what we've been doing during that month so you'll get a few kind of behind the scenes from the industry and Lilla might even do a career tarot for a volunteer which is always good fun yes thank you Riley, would you read this testimonial? I didn't have much knowledge about how to build a portfolio of children's book work before taking this class. Now I feel like I know well, and have the skills to create a really strong portfolio that would attract work. Caitlin, Betsy Bell, and Caitlin and I were working on a project, a couple of projects. I don't know if you're here, Caitlin. Caitlin, Caitlin Betson, because of the class. Yes. I remember um, Caitlin took one of the assignments and cut the character out of paper. I can still remember it. And I was like, who is this? Who is this? What, let's ring that Caitlin Betsy Bell. So let's like shout out to you because I, she's an example of someone who took the character that she illustrated and turned it into a toy idea. That's so that's that. That's awesome. Thank you, Caitlin, for that. Here's the sketch, and this is on the website. So you see in July, you have five mon uh, four Mondays and a Tuesday. Well, four Mondays, and then the gallery goes live, and four Mondays in August. And it's a nice schedule. We've done it a long time in the regular boot camp. So uh, it's tried and true. People really like this system. And you can spend as little or as much time as you want, really. And we've all levels, and we've People with all, some people are working full time and have like three, five kids and you know whatever and who knows, um, so and there are other people who are have the time to do more and then September look at that, four more Mondays so that brings you right to the, to the summer meet your teacher we love her look at that pin on her, that's a big that's a big uh, cappuccino, no it that's, is isn't it it's it huge large. almost yeah. the size of my head. <laughs> it's very. It could be you need a soup spoon for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Here's what art director Zoe Tuck Tucker looks for in an artist's work when she's looking to assign an illustrated book. So what an art director does is basically their job is to hire people like you to illustrate a text that, that she, she got from the editorial department. She works with the editorial people and, say, and they say, hey, let's get somebody who does really beautiful or very painterly or very funny or whatever. And her eye and her training mm -hmm. to understand what a text will benefit, what kind of art the text will benefit from is an art. And so she's always looking for work. So I have these, Zoe. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is a great so example. So Tisha Lee uh, came up through maps and um, through our Illustrating Children's Book course. And I've since done two books, picture books with Tisha. Lila's got one in her hand. I have the other one here. Um, and uh, what I love about Tisha's work particularly is the color palette and that kind of mid-century style. So as soon as she landed in the class, Lilla and I were behind the scenes like, ooh, she's good, I like this, I like that. And it was really exciting for me to be able to go and commission her for a, a real life project. One, if you wouldn't mind clicking on to the next slide, Lilla. Sure. Next slide. Like you're going to tell us what you what you look for. Exactly. Okay. So one of the things that is key in children's picture book illustration work is great character design. Your characters need to uh, reflect the reader. They need to be, when the reader, who's kind of aged four, maybe five, sees the page, they need to see themselves on the page. They need to empathize with their characters. They need to have great emotions, lots of movement. And I think what Tish is showing us here is she can literally get her characters to hang from a tree, to do something really quiet, watering the plants, as well as playing football and skipping. So they're kind of energetic and she's able to draw her characters in lots of different poses and with lots of expression. So that's really like the top three things I'd say, Lilla, Great poses, great expression, beautiful color palette. And if you can put all that into a scene, brilliant. Fabulous. Look at those. Those uh, characters on the right, I really love them because they're just a little bit against type. They're fun. I love the blue hair. I love that these two guys running along with their plants. It's all about love, this book. And it was different kinds of love. And I really like her response to that wonderful yeah Esther it says really they look alive. so alive and that is actually that is one of the things I look for Esther we call it in the in the main class I talk a lot about spark and um that's really what I mean by spark that they feel like they come alive on the page it's, it's so true it's fabulous okay um anonymous says who creates your flat lay that person is so talented well I'm delighted to say that I am that person and I love taking the flat lays. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that feedback. Uh, this is a book that we've, we, my agency did with Osa. Here are some more, just to give you a flavor of what kinds of things. Uh, this is actually, this is not, yeah, books and product. So you may do work in this course and find that you get an adult nonfiction practical which is spell book to illustrate or a beautiful journal cover diary a little uh plastic you know like food container job or a what do you call card <clears throat> um actually this this we didn't do that one that one there sorry <laughs> for transparency here's another book look at the characters that sarah walsh did And here are some more books. Mm, a year oh, of weeks. Here's our teacher. Who is that Hi. guy, man? He's so he's so quiet and he's shy. Such a good looking guy. <laughs> well, I have a crush okay. on him, actually. Yeah, me too. He's um we took that photo when Riley was out here in Massachusetts visiting. And of course, any toy store you go, you'll see this toy that he invented that sold probably more than two million right by now, right? Uh, and it, I think it just hit 11,000 five-star reviews on, uh, on that river, that river that goes through Africa. Oh, yeah. The Nile? Yeah, uh, the Mississippi. Yeah, Amazon. The Thames. Here are more puzzles and toys. So you see, there's just so much work out there. 
because I know some of the time before we get to Riley, I remember when I was an illustrator, I was like, I don't know, is there that is there much work out there? Yes, there is. I want you to know mm -hmm. that. That's why I show you the picture. Uh, Erica says we own the game and have always loved it. Erica Roots in the house. Riley, do you want to speak to some of these? What do you look for as a toy creator? Uh, so the first thing I look for is expression. Expression, expression, expression. Um, is is the character, like what's in their eyes? What What does their smile look like? And I also look for a style that I haven't seen before. So this series of books by jo Jory John and Pete Oswald smashed success. In fact, I did a read through on YouTube. I was like, oh, I love this book. And I got 100,000 views and you know, it's what? probably not. Yeah, 100,000 views. I just read the smart cookie and I talked about, I didn't just do a read through. I yeah. talked about what I loved about the art, what was going on in the art. And I met with a company in Vegas who does, see that the plush on the left side? They wow. take, they're called Merry Makers, M-E-R-R-Y. Um, and everybody, they're an example of a company who takes picture books and they make plush characters and aprons and blah, blah, blah out of them. And that smart cookie, it's a plush inspired by that book. That's where the toy came from. And I imagine the smart cookie and the bad seed and this whole line, mm -hmm. they'll become, in, if they haven't already, an animated series, toys up the wazoo. I don't know what a wazoo is, but up the wazoo is... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe it's best we don't. I'm sure Greg will know what the wazoo is. I think it's yeah. best if we don't know. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's a part of the body they haven't discovered yet. You the know wazoo. what I love? Like how this, just the two eyes and the little mouth, mm. so young and adorable. It's precious. Look at the eyelashes. They're just those three eyelashes down on the bottom. And that is what you all are going to do in this class. You're going to add those tiny details, mm. like maybe there's a beauty mark that's a star that takes your character, even if it's a freaking stick figure on a paper towel, takes your character and turns it in your particular style. That's what I love the most about boot camp is that mm. every one of you, like remember the class we had 700 donuts, everyone made their own donut. That's right. Oh, and then Brian Lambert. So this is an actual product. Please don't share because it's about to be on the market. He and I worked on this project for a company. Mm -hmm. And I pulled this out because this is a puzzle. And look at all of the characters. I was like, oh, my God, do you have 36 hours in each day? Mm -hmm. Look at how they're interacting with each other. Look at just the tiny change in the direction of the eye between the characters, how they interact with each other. Mm -hmm. The characters make this product and so does this style this particular style i love that because i i also commissioned brian and brian was a student in class yes. i commissioned him for a picture book and lilla has agented him so i think um it's all come full circle and we've all of us <laughs> have used him for for something it's just phenomenal work isn't it so beautiful look at this stained glass window I would just love to do this puzzle. I mean, mm. this, let me blow that up. What? I mean, that's just like a little, little, what do you call? Little tiny. Oh, thing. I like the little greenhouse at the top, Lilla, with the squirrel in it. That's, that's sweet. Love. Yeah. I thought that was a conservatory. Oh, it probably is a conservatory. You're it. quite right. And here it's a greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the little jam in the, like, in the cellar. And it's those kinds of details and specificity. He didn't just do the first thing that came to mind. Mm. Here's, what is this? This like fox or coyote mm. or something. And, and he did research on this kind of, um, what's that roof called? That kind French. of- French. Um, Let's call it French style. Champs-Élysées. Posh um, French. Um, anyway. You know, just like getting that research, staying that, look at this. And you know, Lilla, the other thing that we're looking at here is like Brian's created an entire world mm. that we can get lost in. And when you're doing picture book illustration, that's a really fundamental part is to create that believable world that the child wants to get lost in and mm. look at all of those details. Mm -hmm. 
Riley, do you think you might need some product testers for that one? Maybe. Yes, yes, yes. So again, Brian was in class and I think he drew a cat skeleton. I'm like, okay, let's talk about how that cat's going to live on a boat. And mm. then man, like just so many great characters. Okay, this one, and I, I just can't stress this enough. This entire market of blind boxes is just, it's going crazy. So what you're seeing here is a blind box. If you don't know what that is, these are boxes and you don't know what's in them until you open it up. And this started with the illustration. Someone was like, oh, I want to draw a square cat. And they did. And it's entire, an entire line of characters. Um, it's a toy category that is, it's just, it has an endless need for characters. And like, that's where it starts. Product developers and art directors look for you on social media that, you know, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, that they're looking for characters. That's all this is. This is a character and then it's molded out of plastic. Wow, I like them all. Okay. I'm not a giant fan of celebrating sadness, um, but so my niece is like 21 or so, and she is kind of obsessed with this sort of genre of products. These are babies crying. And one of them, I think she's filling up a fishbowl with her tears. One of them is, I think, mopping the floor with her tears. Um, the one on the right, she's in a rabbit costume. I love these. In fact, I started crying and everyone's like, would you stop crying? And I'm like, but it's the, it's the, the cry babies. And these are characters turned into toys. And I also want to show you, this is a game called Ruby's Gem Quest. Should I and stop it? There we go. So Ru Ruby started out as a character and then she became a toy. Oh. Focus. Right, Ruby? So she became a toy. And that a lot of illustration. So in this class, you're going to see, or if when you're out shopping, you're going to see lots and lots of characters. Oh, I just, I'm sorry, I'm so quiet. On packaging. So that's another type of project you can get as an artist. Illustration on packaging, on cereal boxes, on toy boxes. I know I talk a lot. I, I love talking. It's fun. Let me go back to PowerPoint. Okay. Wow. Oh, I need that. I oh, okay. So I just the, saw this. I these, almost bought this yesterday. So these are the Woobles. I actually <gasps> discovered them on TikTok and I put this, I put, I have an Amazon shop and I put them in my Amazon shop because this is an activity kit. That's why oh. I bought this. They started with simple drawings of animals with these wide set dot eyes. Look at the X for the mouth slash nose. It's wearing an apron. So these are kits that come, come with, you know, the yarn and the hook. Look at the penguin on the lower left with the racket or that blob of, I don't know if it's poop or a, a cupcake or with the eyebrows. Tiny little change. Or look at the pig with the square pupils in its eyes looking in two different directions hilarious someone for says, minecraft that's for minecraft someone says that um shark maybe it was on shark tank yes it was on shark tank and um i love these kits they're super high quality but they start with art they start with art yeah so great oh my god katie vernon this is katie vernon she's a lilla rogers artist and she drew a blob of spaghetti running. It was just an Instagram thing. I was like, Katie, what's going on? Where is, who is this? She's like, I don't know. I just drew the spaghetti. I said, well, let's name her. Her name is Mary Nara. <laughs> then she, in fact, I still have that plush in a box. I need to mail her back. Um, the basil is a bow, tiny details, all in Katie's style. Her very loose, blobby style. There's a pile of guacamole. Um, and so it became, we did all these drawings and we wrote a blurb about who they could be. A total children's book material. These are the leftovers. Yeah. And she actually um, then wrote and illustrated a picture book uh, in this kind of style. She's done a few. Actually, mm -hmm. she's written and illustrated. Halloweeny. So don't 
know where your work is going to take you. Exactly. Okay, student work from previous classes. This is a lot. This is a lot. So guess we'll just chime in if there's something that really strikes you. But everybody, what I want you to look at is A, the range of styles, B, the great characters, C, the storytelling. What do I mean by that? You see a picture and you go, oh, look, that character is trying to climb that ladder, but it's made out of jelly and there's like, there's a story, there's a narrative going on, okay? So see what you can um, glean from these. Uh, uh, this is Chrissy Rada. Great character. Heather Manning. Mm. So don't forget in the class, there's both the toy assignment, like, like the previous image, oh, the previous image. And there's the kid book uh, portion too. So you're going to see both and look at the different kinds of styles. Oh, Claire Vaca. Mm, this one. Darcy, only so good. So this is what you're, you're, I mean, this, she put a lot of work into this, but this is what your page might look like for the uh, Riley section of the course. Here's a picture book, Alicia Mortley. Seiko Cisco. You see the range of styles. There's no rule on style. And then green again. Cute. Oh, this is lit. Is I think it's Lydia, isn't it? I don't see your name, but I think it's Lydia Grace. Yes, it is. It is Lydia. So much detail. I mean, she's she just like spends so many hours on the piece, and if and she works on Procreate, and she also teaches kids. She's an art teacher in school, so she has her iPad that, and so she can bring it with her. She has a uh, son too, so she can bring it with her wherever she goes. Sarah, I, just, I really love seeing all of the different styles. It's amazing. Okay. And this is just an extract, a sort of short um, paragraph of text to give people a setting and a main character and get you started. And then people have just riffed off of that and created these amazing scenes. Kind of amazing. Um, someone asked, I think, Tay Cho, what tools the students use to create these great works. You can work digitally like an iPad Pro or Wacom. You can work with regular old art supplies. It's really what you love. Christina Skull, Scutleberg. This is also kind of a mid-century field. Someone asked, what is mid-century? You could Google it and you'll see a whole bunch of images. Um, it, this, it tends to be flat like this with some sketchiness. There's no real. Kirsten Welther different style too. Christina Scott, Scott Leberg again. Oh, that's a different piece. Jan Schmidt. Mm, pull toy, remember that assignment. Mm -hmm. Look at their little faces. Erica. So this was probably for the picture book and she did it like a graphic novel or comic strip. Zoe, do you want to read this one? Why, yes, my dear, I will. You, the combination of kid book illustration and working on toy ideas is golden. I signed up to learn more about kid book illustration, but was amazed by how much fun it was to work on the toy concepts. I have to agree, Jacqueline. I think when we came up with the idea for this course, I hadn't really ever considered how closely aligned children's picture books and toys were in the past. And working with Riley on the course has really shown me like, just we bounce ideas back and forth off of each other. Riley is just a heap of ideas, which is amazing. You can literally show Riley, uh, you know, a plant pot and he'll come up with a game concept based off of it. And it's just, you're right. There's, there is this kind of um, symbiotic relationship that happens between the two industries. And I hope over the next three months, actually, we'll be able to show you a bit more of that. Oh, that's wonderful. 
Okay, here's another. Continuing on with work from previous classes, Sally Agar. You see, this is a flat style and it's clean, it's di digital. Great color palette, great characters. Oh. <laughs> Harry Sock. The bags under the eyes on that lemon, so sour. <laughs> Yeah. Sour puss. <laughs> Here is a lot on a diamond. Tali Wu. May I say that when I was doing the read throughs, um, Zoe, for the class, your little audio, as I was reading through them, I instantly fell into those worlds. Like you said, children fall into mm -hmm. these worlds and in some of the paragraphs, I can imagine a million different characters. So there's a lot of material there, even even out of one of your story starters. Thank you. Uh, her stories are fantastic. Yeah. She's written so many stories for um, for Matt's for this class and the other, and they are just I don't know how she does it. They are lyrical. They are beautiful. They're poetic. They're visual. Her goal is to make them visual and emotional, so you have something to respond to. And you see the range of styles. It's, it works for every style. There's well, another style. You. Absolutely. Luisa Garcia. <laughs> Sarah Zweck. Jean Ruth. Look at the flat, the lighting here. Um, Riley, would you read this one? Testimonial. I learned that there are numerous paths by which you can succeed and that m the main thing to love is what you were doing. This boot camp experience amped up my passion level by a thousand percent. Oh, so that's Jody. Mm, so nice. Yeah, there's really good energy in the classes. Here's some more images. Robin Scaly. And there's I the have... black carrot on the bottom left. Oh, my goodness. That's good, it's right? really sweet, isn't it? The little sneakers. Yeah. Tara. <laughs> the bumpy, grumpy car. All from the same texts. And you mm. see everybody interprets in their own way. Marty Meyer. So here are a few from... Oh, if, if you don't know the Matt's prep, you can find it, I think, on the blog. Is that right, Becky? And uh, it's the assignment was to draw a few items you might find in a bathroom on the left, and then on the right, turn them into a character. This is Lydia Graves. So you can see how she did that. Here's some more. Sharon Nullberger on the left, or Nulsey. And I, it's, she didn't sign it, but I know her work. And Rorba on the right. Prep two, turn your bathroom uh, items into characters. Really fun. This is just like a great. Uh, oh, good. Becky and Louise put it on the, in the chat. You can go find the assignments. <laughs> but since class starts today, you don't need to do it. You don't need to do it. Um, from last year. I just left these in. I left them in, Becky, because they're so good. <clears throat> it looks so deserty. <laughs> oh, dessert. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I forgot to remove that red text. <laughs> and I'll read this. So, as a new creative to make art that sells, I have absorbed incredible amounts of top tips to showcase my art. My artwork has improved consistently, and I now have an even greater desire to use it to make a living. That's wonderful. Okay. Time for the giveaway, but I'm just going to go finish the PowerPoint so we can close it. So here you go. You go up here to sign in. <laughs> Avocado. You go click on courses, or you can click right here, or you can click right here. You can't help but click on it. Okay, so let's do the giveaway. Let me explain. Oh, let's change to gallery view. Let me explain how to do, um, how we do the giveaway. The giveaway 
is I am thinking of a category. You can type in your answer, as many answers as you want, as often as you want. And Kim in the background and I will try to find the first one we see, but it's probably not the very first one because we have a few hundred people in here and the answers will go really quickly. So um, you get what you get and you don't get upset. And if we do pick you, then you get the course for free. If you've already purchased the course, you can gift it to any friend of your choice. And that's how we work. Is everybody ready? If you're ready, type in ready. That's just a trick, really. <laughs> okay. All right. The category is an animal. Very general. But I have some clues, some cues, clues. Okay, it's got four legs. It's small. Oh, oh I saw it. Uh, me too. Oh, I saw it. oh gosh, it's going way too fast. <laughs> I'm scrolling back. Um, I know, I'm scrolling too, Kim. Okay. Oh well, we might not get that one. I I'm just going to keep going until I find one. Might not be that one. People are still typing. Oh, yes, I found it. Oh, um, you did? Yeah, so the answer is Salamander, and the one I saw was Tammy Lee Bradley. Yay, Tammy Lee Bradley. So um, email hello at makeartthatsells.com and say that you guessed Salamander and um, that you win the class. Yay, Tammy. Yay. Well done. I had more clues too. Starts with an S. It's little and lizardy. But I didn't need the clues. Oh, this is wonderful, everybody. This is wonderful. Let's see if we have any. Oh, we do have some Q and A's. So, um, do go sign up. You can. How long are the doors open for? Hi, Mel. Um, probably Thursday usually. But if but you do want to start today so you can really get in there and get Zoe's text. Okay. Oh, that's great. Annette says, just wanted to say I've gotten more work from my character class than any other maths class. Annette, that's amazing. What kind of work have you received from class? Maybe you can let us know. That's really cool. Malu Paul says, who will have access to the gallery with all the work that has been handed in? Um, Louise or Becky? Do we share that publicly and then our directors can look? When we buy the course, is there a limit to how long the information is available? Thank you, Trina, great question. And while um, one of the team is typing in, I know they give you gobs of time. Um, Greg says, hi from Greg, for anyone considering signing up, I. Highly recommend all maths classes and boot camps are a great way to get a huge variety of experiences with great friend teachers. Join us. Yes, you will get a lot of information. Zoe and Riley have put so much into the downloadables that you get. And how fun is that? On a Monday, you wake up, you download, and you get your assignment and you work on it. And then the last Monday of every month, the three of us are here to give you inside scoop. Annette says, I did a fun donut logo for a food truck. So Annette, I'm guessing you did the donut uh, season at boot camp. And now I'm currently working with an author. Well, that is great news. I'm really pleased for you. Lila, I wanted to add in, um, you know, a lot of the examples we've shown from uh, last year's class are really uh, advanced and comprehensive and amazing. But I just wanted to say that if you are right at the beginning of your journey and you're thinking, I wonder what it's like to try illustrating for children's books, or I wonder what it's like trying to come up with toy concepts, but you've never done it before. Maybe you haven't drawn much before. You are very welcome here. And um, 
we are here to support you. The brilliant thing about class is there is a Facebook group that goes on in the background. We dip in and out of the Facebook group, but that um, group, anyone who's done that before, you can chime in on the chat and let us know what you think. But um, from where we are, it's a really supportive space. Everyone shares their work. You get feedback from your peers. And in class, you've got brand new people, newbies just like you, but you also have professional grade illustrators that are agented that are using the class to build out their portfolio with more characters. And they will help lift you up and bring you up to that level that um, we're looking for when we're commissioning. So this is a really good safe space for you to begin that art journey. And we are with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I laid down the groundwork years ago. So Matt's is in its 11th year. I co-founded it with, with Beth Kempton. And I laid down the law early that this is a safe space. As Zoe said, this is a place where you get support. We love newbies. We love the old pros. We love the working professionals who are there to help the newbies. The newbies are there to ask questions of the pros. It's fantastic. You can mm. get so much information from the group alone. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Those groups, I think it's one of the best side effects and features of this course instead of just sitting there on social and seeing someone's work and making a comment you're interacting i mm -hmm. i love it when i see a class member post something and ask for feedback and mm -hmm. you know to get that feedback from you know a few hundred people like where's where where else are you going to get that i love the group i love that and it's yeah. never critical it's not like oh well that's what we're it's, I love the pink one. Which one do you like better, pink or blue? Pink one, I love, the, you know, whatever. It's always positive, but helpful. Louise says, the boot camp galleries are public and published for everyone to see on the Matt's website. We give you a link to share. We also share on Matt's socials. And the other question, Becky says, hi there. The classroom is open for six months after class ends. So access until March, 2025. Lilla, Paula Guzman said she took her first maths class, which was lettering, and she loved it. That's Lilla's class. And please, Lilla, don't ever stop teaching and giving classes. So that's so nice. That's really great. So great. Thank you. Vanessa Han, I've met the best people and now friends ever in the Facebook group. And that's also one of the great things, isn't it? We see people... Um, where you find people who are in your neck of the woods, in your country, in your town. And we often hear that those artists group together, they form their own groups, they critique each other. And when they're going to trade fairs, they meet up. So it does really sort of spread out beyond this course, which I, I just, it's so heartwarming for us. I keep running into students. <laughs> <laughs> so they like run up to me. I'm like, I'm just this guy. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> even in Vegas. Yeah. It was oh, Casey, Casey was her name in Vegas. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, and she showed me her work and who she was pitching it to. Mm. It, was, it was a good feeling. So great. Um, I, I, um, I'm looking at Q&A. Amelie says, are there deadlines to post work? Yes. Deadlines are a creative's best friend. So there's a deadline every week. Anonymous asks, is the class good for a toy pitch I want to do on my own, or is this mainly to create characters to showcase to agents? Riley, you want to take that one? Um, yeah, it's a great class to start. And is the question how, like, should you, should they get an agency? Assignment. No, I think it's basically the answer is you, Riley gives an assignment for the toy, and that's what you do. And the assignment is based on its years of knowledge and expertise, that's going to be a great portfolio piece for you then to show to clients and learn from. And if you're not ready to show it, you're learning what a pitch should look like. Okay. Yes, what she said. What I see, yeah. Okay. Um, Nisha says, hi, Lilla Riley and Zoe. I loved illustrating children's book 24. Oh, yeah, 2024. We've just done. I thought it was like session 20. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait for character boot camp. Just curious if Riley's assignments would be along the same text, which was shared by Zoe today. Well, it's a brand new text by Zoe that you get in class and a brand new assignment from Riley. Who, and he riffs off her. The character you create 
from Zoe's text week one. Week two, Riley says, okay, now take this character and you're going to make, put it, turn it into a pull toy or a puzzle or a maze or a monster thingy jigger. Okay. Hello, is it worth taking? Uh, is it worth taking the course if you're on holiday for two weeks and might miss out a bit on the course? Absolutely. It's because you do have the three months. So a lot of people in the summer will miss or be away. You can catch up. It's not like you get so much work every week that you couldn't do two weeks of work in one week or even three. And the last week of every month, there's no assignment. So you can really catch up. It's catch up time before the new month. Okay. Do our directors care whether the illustration is on pure white background? So you want to take that one? Yeah. Um, Kirsten asks, do art directors care whether the illustration is on a pure white background or not for character design examples for Instagram? Well, I think I understand the question. I'm going to answer it as though, uh, basically, Kirsten, what I look for when I see an illustrator I do want to see that they have really strong character design and those characters can be drawn on a white background. Um, a bit like the examples we showed you from Tisha's book, uh, which was this one, where you see characters uh, against a white background. But I also am looking to see those characters placed within a scene. So I do want to see them um, in a, in a uh, full color double page scene. So that might look like something like this. I wanna see how these characters look within their context. So I'm kind of looking for both. It's not an either or thing. It's uh, I'm looking for both and all of it all at once. Fabulous. Um, okay. Anonymous says, Riley, should we get an agency to help us break into the toy industry with our illustrations? I would say the first thing you should do is share your work, share your work, share your work, because that's where agents, a la Lola Rogers, find, that's where they find artists. So I would do that first. And you never know who is going to see your art. You just have no idea. You, you have no idea. And I'll say that five more times because I'm a broken record. So to answer your question, start by sharing your work and an agency may see your work and tag when you're, you know, I would tag if there's a, like a publishing company, who, you know, who you'd like to see your work that like, they may not respond, but you know, tagging is not nagging. I don't think. Oh, I love that. That's great. Riley. Leanne says my previous course characters are now on a jiggy puzzle, fluff and puff from a few years ago. Oh, fluff That's and... so fantastic. Sarah says, how can we share our work securely where AI won't scrape it though? You know, here's my feeling and I it's subject to change. Don't quote me, this is how I feel right now. I So a few years ago, I interviewed Lisa Congdon who I had represented years ago. And I think it was like a year or two ago and we talked about AI. And I said, Lisa, before our, our um, video, I went on AI and said, do a, like a, a horse in in Lisa Congdon's style. And it, it was ridiculous. It looked nothing like hers and it was terrible. Now it may evolve over time, but it's not going to be able to do a picture book. It cannot make changes. You can't say, oh, make this redder and then add that right. and we want more emotion. It cannot do picture books. It can't do what you do. It can't be your brand. It's just not that good. Don't not promote. Because let me tell you something, okay? Okay. Years ago, when the internet started, people said, oh, I don't want to put my art on, on the internet, on my a website, because people can copy. Yeah, that's how people felt. I'm like, you got to show your work to get work. Mm -hmm. And no one is going to copy it the way you do it. No yeah. one. I, was I absolutely crazy. echo that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, when people, um, first of all, before it escapes, Katie, you've got some really great comments, but you put it to host and panelists. And I think everybody would really enjoy seeing your comment. 
Um, for me, as someone commissioning, I don't know I can commission you unless you show me your work. So how am I going to find you if you don't show it? And we really do teach um, the idea of show the work, the type of work that you want to get. So let's say, for example, you want to illustrate board books like this. You need your portfolio to have, be full of great characters that are suitable for board books. You need to show it to me for me to find it. Um, Katie is probably hopefully copying and pasting this comment into the all and everyone. But um, I just want to echo what Katie's put here, which is she says, what I'm hearing is not to be too worried about AI for books. US publishers I talk to and hear from podcasts say their legal departments won't allow AI work for risk of lawsuit. Now, I can absolutely echo that at the moment I'm working with five publishers in the UK and pretty much every single one of them does have that clause in their contracts at the moment. We as employees are not allowed to use AI in any form. We're not really allowed to use chat GPT, but more importantly, I'm not allowed to use any kind of generative AI within Photoshop to manipulate anyone's artwork. And as a contributor, as an artist or an author, it's in your contract that you cannot use those uh, AI routes either. Mm -hmm. We are actively supporting the creative and we want that human element. Also, the other thing for me in books, and I'd love to know what Lilla and Riley think, is that you, you could create something using AI, but really what people want to connect with is the person. Mm -hmm. And so when I go to festivals or the Bologna Book Children's Fair, it's not going to be AI I want to meet. I want to meet <laughs> agents. I want to meet artists. I want to collaborate on great ideas. Mm. That doesn't come from AI. And the unexpected doesn't come from getting three crazy people, us three together, to come up with a story. That doesn't happen with AI. That happens with us three together. I love that. Also, so the thing about AI, it's an amalgamation of styles from the billions of people in the world. It's not a single Coffee. style and you're mm. going to see on social media the rules now like on TikTok if you don't click the box that says this was generated by AI like you're booted off the same with YouTube they're all doing that wait this and, wasn't this yeah wasn't created it's, by AI yeah, it's like going to a restaurant and taking every single thing on the menu yeah. and making something out of it like soup what if I just want carrots it, it tends because it can't do like um, it, it has to smush stuff together. So it's a very painterly, mushy style that I find not at all appealing in any way, shape, or form. Um, if you want to do, I'll tell you what it's good for. I want to do a unicorn with a pink burst behind it and a whole bunch of planets and a spaceship going by in a tree. And it'll come out looking like something you saw maybe 20 years ago on some sort of like it's true not and also cool. once you create the image you can't edit the image that's it it's done so you can't it's, it's an art director sort of, yeah but you also it has to be as good as that instruction that you put in at the beginning it's yeah. not I'm not I'm not stressed about it right now but I can understand it is out there it's it's like it you know the horse is bolted it's out we just have to kind of stick firm to our brand there was a good question here from candace which is in the chat which i would just like to quickly grab um how likely is it that illustration agencies will follow you or connect with your art on instagram well i'm not sure about illustration agents but candace the um it's my primary source of commissioning i pretty much open instagram to find artists um and I'm sure Lilla must be the same. You must see people and then that's what entices you to look for more and maybe contact them to represent them. I have one more AI note. AI is not exclusive. Right. Platforms like Mid Journey. Once, like mm -hmm. you see everything that everyone's generating, the whole world sees it. Whereas if you're working on a product or a picture book or stationery or whatever, no one is see no machine is learning until your product is out in the world and good luck asking the machine to create something exclusive and make it private. That is one of the main problems is that it's taking the art and turning into this, this giant forever database, but it doesn't know what's in your head. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe someday it'll know what's in our, I, as far as I know, AI doesn't know what's in your head and what you're about to draw this moment. 
Yeah, you know, here's my thing. As I said, you know, people were really, really worried about having a website, putting something on a website back, you know, how many decades ago. And I had to give this whole same spiel again. People, you got to show your work to get work. It, the, somebody may copy, but they're going to do a crappy job. Also, is an art director going to go to the lame copier or to you who has a whole body of work that supports it? I don't want you to worry about AI. I really don't. I want you to focus on making your great work, putting it on social media and getting work from it. I really don't want you to worry about it. I'm not worried. I'm really not. I've been mm -hmm. through this rodeo with, I'm, I'm sure that, and, and then stock, everybody freaked out about stock in the eighties. Oh my God, it's going to destroy illustration. But stock is generic and right. it's not going to be special. So, you know, just be special. Just yeah, be special. Angela Caldwell says, I love when I see someone has bookmarked my Instagram post because I fantasize it might be an agent or an art director. Well, Angela, let me tell you, that is exactly what I do. So behind the scenes, you know, you can create collections. I'm always on Instagram, not always. I mean, I do have to do my day job as well. But when I'm on Instagram, if I see anything I like, and I think, oh, that would make a nice picture book. Or, oh, that's just right for a nonfiction sticker book. That's right for this encyclopedia of dinosaurs for Riley. You know, all these different things. I will save different collections and bookmark them behind the scenes. So, yes, I hope that who your work is being bookmarked by is someone like me, because it does happen. And then when I get that commission, I go straight to my collection and look at my artists that I've been saving. So it does happen. But you have to show the work. You have to put it up on Instagram. You have to put your website together because that is where we're looking. So Aparna asks, are agents going on sites like Cara or is Instagram still the main platform? You know, here's the thing. As Zoe said, Zoe answered that this in the picture book class, the illustrating children's books. She already has, and as she just said, a million bookmarks. She follows all these people. I don't know that somebody like Zoe is going to start up in Cara, they might dip in. Um, I Again, I wouldn't worry. Sure, go on Cara if you like, no problem there. But um, is an art director going to bop over to there? Is an agent going to bop over? I don't know. The jury is still out. Stay loose, stay flexible, mm -hmm. but don't freak out, don't panic. I love that. We're going to bop, I'm going to stay loose and I'm going to stay flexible. I am not going to freak out. I'm yeah. not on Cara though. My my primary reason is I I picked a platform and um oh Leah, I'm definitely embracing wobble, I'll tell you. Um I picked a platform because I can't possibly do Facebook, Twitter, X, sorry, threads, uh Cara and Instagram. So I I'm Instagram and um I know that might disappoint people who have moved over to Cara, but I'm definitely staying in the Instagram camp. Now, Zoe may change her mind uh, years from now if things are different, but that's how she feels now. And it's really understandable. She's not alone. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Is there another question? Um, I'm really interested. In the ICB course, does this only happen once a year? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to decide if I take character boot camp now, if the ICB course won't be available next year. We only do each course once a year and not, we don't always do. I have so many courses I've written or co-written. We don't do everything every year. So okay, there's that. Do art directors connect with international st students and artists? Absolutely. Is it rude to tag an art director on Instagram? What is the etiquette? Zoe, your thoughts? Well, I think we kind of fall in slightly different camps here. I mean, uh, I get tagged a lot and sometimes I find that um, overwhelming, but you can tag me, but I won't always respond. Um, I essentially create my collections and when I see something I especially like, I will contact the artist or if I see a piece of work that I'm like, yes, especially if I've been following an artist for a long time and I'm watching their trajectory and I'm seeing their work just get richer and stronger and better. Sometimes they'll put something up and I'll be like, that's it. That's it. 
I'll comment underneath and say, I love this. And that's really me giving them a nod to say, I see you and I've, I've got you bookmarked and I'm, I'm watching, but um, you can tag me, but uh, yeah, don't expect a response all the time. I do get tagged a lot. Yes. What would you say? What would both of you say? Am I, I horrible? Uh, no, it reminds me of getting in the mail. Right, Lilla? It, it, maybe you agree, both of you actually. It reminds me of getting something in a mail, in the mail from an artist. I would open up the envelope, look at it. Sometimes it would go on my cork board. Sometimes it would, you know, be sent off to have another life somewhere. But that that's how I look at tagging. I sometimes look, I don't look, but... I mean, th it's that's fine the to tag. It's fine. Yeah. I think it's fine. Everybody does it. Don't worry. There, and, and, you know, it, it's all relatively new. So there aren't strict rules that you're, you don't have to worry about like offending or breaking. Okay. Um, so we answered that. Is it true? Adrian says, is it true that unless you register a copyright before posting your artwork on social media, you lose the ability to copyright it? Absolutely not. Once you create a piece, you are the copyright owner by virtue of creating it. Okay. And I'm not a lawyer. And if you have any questions, contact a lawyer. I just had to say that. Will we be having breakout groups during the class Zooms? Um, are they meetings on, on the... The last Monday, when we do those, the last Mondays, maybe, maybe um, Louise or Becky knows. I don't remember. Does anyone remember if we did them breakout rooms? If it's feel a like it depended. I think maybe they were ad hoc. Yeah, I don't remember doing them, but I'm open to this suggestion. Okay. I'm just trying to win points back after saying, "Don't tag me." <laughs> So mean, so mean. <laughs> oh. Okay, Becky says, hi there. They are currently set up as we webinars without breakout rooms, but we can change that if needed. Okay, so maybe we can ask in the um, Facebook group or something. How do the breakouts work? Oh, it's the most fun thing in the whole world. Oh so my God, why are we not doing it? I know, we should. Okay, so what we do is um, every Kim presses a, a magic button and... Three people get in a little private, just like us. Let's say we would be a breakout room. Three random people go get together and no one else can see them. And they're like, hey, Zoe. And everybody gets five minutes and I'll go, hi, so I'm working on this thing. And um, I kind of feel like, do you think I shouldn't make that this and do that, that? Oh my goodness. And, yeah. And you get to chat with your fellow students. Oh, that's so share. nice. Does anybody know what a good printer is? I don't know, whatever, you know? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And you might get Greg in your breakout group. It would be a dream. Be I good. mean, there's yeah. a chance. It's true. Yeah. Well, that sounds like fun. So I've never been in a it. great breakout group. So um, would you that be would willing be to be in, in a breakout would group? would be willing yeah. to do that. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Ryan? Would you be willing? I love them. Um, I I love, love, love them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Becky, can you arrange that if you don't mind going forward so that the first one will be at the end of the month? I got little ones. Oh yeah, Annette, that was great. Okay. That's pretty um, fun. So I answered that and answered that. Starting the work, we'll be having breakout rooms. Yes, as of now, thank you for asking that. Okay, and I think we've answered everything known to woman. Wow, last chance for a question, people. Why? Uh, Debbie asks, do I live in Bournemouth? No, I don't. I'm still in, I'm not in Bournemouth. My family is, but I'm in Brighton. So I'm just a little bit further along the coast from you. Uh, yeah, so there you go. In sunny Brighton, but it's pretty grey here today. It's definitely not summer in this corner of the world at the moment. <laughs> Well, everybody, we're going to sign off, but be sure that you go sign up because we won't be offering this again till I think next year, but not before that. And you won't regret it. It's, it's, you get so much money's worth. You get your money's worth. So, um, and we can't wait to see you in class. You're going to have fun. And they already get, you get stuff already today. So go in, sign up, go into the classroom. And if you have any questions, Louise, she is hello at makeartthatsells.com. 
She will answer all your questions. She's super wonderful. Becky just put the link in to make it easier. And it's so nice to see so many new faces or new names and old names too. So I wanna thank my wonderful co-teachers, Zoe Tucker and Riley Rybread Wilkinson. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And I can't wait to see what unfolds in this class. It's gonna be great. Oh, thanks, Lilla. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you in class.